Hey everyone, I hope you all are safe and doing good. So in this series of discussing coding interview questions, in this video we will be discussing one more lead code question that is power of two. And the answer we will see in Java language. Now before starting this question, let me just tell you one thing. Our DSA with Java course has already been started from 19th of September and I have already uploaded their three to four lectures. Right, there we will complete Java language complete Java language, then complete DSA plus many these kind of lead code questions I'll cover, quiz assignment, detailed notes, you will get proper handwritten notes and we'll see some case studies and projects as well. So you can go and check out the link you will get in the description box of this video as well as in the pinned comment and the coupon code BEST500 is still active. You will get extra 10% discount if you use this coupon code. Okay, now let's discuss this question. The question is power of two. So the, what is the problem statement? Given an integer n, return true if it is power of 2. Otherwise, return false. So, let me just tell you what is this mean. This example is, let me just explain this thing. What does this mean here? See. For example, if input is 1, if n is 1, then output should be true. Because 2 to power 0 is 1. So, you have to return true if it is power of 2. So, 2 to power 0 is 1. If n is 16, if n is 16, then 2 to power 4, we know it's 16. 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. It's 16. So, the number is 16 means it is 2. We can represent this number in 2 to, 2 to power something. 2 to power x, 2 to power something, means it will return also true. If the number is, if the number is 3, see 2 to power 0 is 1, 2 to power 1 is 2, then 2 to power 2 is 4. 3 we cannot represent in this form, in 2 to the power form. So this will return false. Like this, you have to find out. Right? Suppose number is 1, it's always 2 to because 2 to the power 0 is always 1. Okay. So, if number is 1, this will already always return true. Right. So, we can put something like, like this condition in our case. If the n is equal to is equal to 1, then always return true. Something like this. Right. But if number is negative, suppose number is number is minus 4. Can you represent this number in 2 to the power something? No. 2 to the power 0 is 1, 2 to the power, obviously minus 1 is definitely not, will not achieve any minus number in this form. So, if, if number is negative, suppose if number is less than 0, then always return false. So, two cases we have identified. Now, you have to check for the condition if number is greater than 1. This thing you need to find out. How you will check this thing? Let me show you. Suppose number is 16. So, one approach is brute force approach we can apply. This is the simplest one. See, if you divide 16 by 2, then you will get 8. And remainder is, in this case, remainder is 0. Again, divide by 2, you will get 4. Remainder is 0. Again, divide by 4, you will, get, you will get 2. Remainder is 0. Again, divide by 2, ultimately, you will get 1. Okay. If number is, suppose, number is, suppose, uh, 20. Or number is, suppose, 32. Let's suppose, take first. 32, number is 32. Now, again apply this formula. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Remainder is 0. Again 2, 8. Remainder is again 0. Again divide by 2, 4. Remainder is 0. Again 2, again. And ultimately, you will get 1. So, remainder is, for all these division, remainder is always 0. For all these division, remainder is always 0. Till finally you will get 1. So, if this is the case, then the number is 
definitely we can say we can represent this number in power of 2 let's see one number i am taking 17 17 by 2 you will get 8 but here remainder is 1 remainder you will get 1 but remain and see till 1 you will get n is equal to 1 remainder should be 0 so this cannot be a case this would be false because remainder we are getting 1 okay in between and still we haven't reached to 1 because here is 8 and remainder is 1 remainder should be 0 till you till you reach to 1 this should be the case how you represent this thing in your program we can do a logic something like this while like something like this we can write two cases we have identified S next case we can write something like this while number mode 2 equal to equal to 0 till then we divide while number mode remainder is 0 till then we keep dividing so till then something like this n is equal to n divided by 2 till then keep dividing if this condition is false then check if number equal to equal to 1 then return true otherwise return false that's it see in 17 case if number is 17 so 17 mode 2 we will remainder will be 1 right so is this condition true no condition is not true. So we will not divide again. We will not enter here. We will be here. So if if number is equal to is equal to one till you reach to one, no number is still number is still what? Now number is here number is seventeen only. Okay. So it this is not the case. It will return false. I hope you got this. Suppose number is number we take 5. So 5, all the, these two conditions like this is not negative number, this is not n. So it will fall in this category, this condition. So 5 mode 2 does remainder 1? No. Remainder of this is, sorry, remainder at, uh, 0? No, remainder is 1. So, n is 5, but when we divide by 2, then remainder is 1. So, this condition is not true. If this condition no, is not true, we will not enter here. We will not divide this. This number would not be updated. Directly, we go here, we check n is equal to is equal to 1. No, because n is still 5. So, it will return false. Let's check this for, uh, let's uh, check this for, uh, suppose, 4. Number is 4. n is 4. n mode 2. Sorry, 4 mode 2. If you divide 4 by 2, does remainder 0? Yes, remainder is 0 at first time. So, this condition is true. Now, we will enter here. Now, n is equal to n by 2. So, n is 4 at first. Now, divide by 4. Divide by 2 is 2. So, n is updated. n becomes now 2. Again, we we'll, are still in for loop. Again, we go here. Now, number is 2. So, 2 mode 2 is equal to 0. Yes, condition is again true. So, again we will enter here. Now, number becomes, number is 2. So, 2 divided by 2, number becomes 1. Now, again we go here. Now, 1 mode 2. Is it 0? No. It is 1 because remainder is 1. So, this condition, now this time is not true. So, we will not enter in this loop. Control will go here. Now, check. Is number 1? Yes. Number is updated and it's 1. So, it's true. And it's true because 4 is power of 2. I hope you got, got this approach. This is brute force. This There is a more optimized approach. That thing we will discuss in some other video. Let me just show you practically how to run this. So, let me just open my this IntelliJ idea. And here within this project, I have created a project. Within this source, let me just create a new Java class. And the name I am going to give. It's power of 2. Okay. The name of the file is automatically saved. Power of 2. Now within this we write 
a function a method sorry so we are writing like public the name is boolean and the method name is is power of 2 and we are passing whatever integer like one argument that is n fine now we will give here the two base conditions we have that is first if this n is less than 1 means negative then definitely it will return false return false it's not power of 2 second else if let's check another for another condition n is equal to is equal to 1 if equal to 1 then definitely it's true it's power of yes 2 to the power 0 is always 1 so these two cases we have discussed now third case we will be discussing in this y sorry in else else number is greater than 1 now so we check while this n mode 2 equal to equal to 0 till then we divide we keep dividing n is equal to n divided by 2 okay and after after this while loop after this while loop within this else now we check if n is equal to is equal to 1 basically what return true else return false this would be next line so else return false so this is the case i hope you got this thing now to execute this within this class only we have we have this method is power of 2 and obviously to run a class we should have a main method as well so within a same class only i'm writing main method public static void main string args and there to call this method is power of 2 you have to create method of this class power of 2 so how to create object how to so you have to create object of this class how to create object of the class name of the class that is power of 2 then object name like ob, obj is equal to new keyword new keyword is must to assign memory to allocate memory for all the members of this class then this is the constructor basically default constructor we will see these thing in the java course dsa with java course if you want to go for this course the link you will get in the description box of this video and uh, you can go and check out now let's run this how to call this method obj dot is power of 2 and let's pass here 17 and we are calling so it is returning boolean value either true or false so obviously you have to print that value so we will call this in System dot out dot print ln. Sorry. So you is the shortcut for this. Just write down so ut and click enter and you will get the complete line. System dot out dot print ln. Obj dot this thing. Let me just run this and I'll show you. It should give you false. See, seventeen is not power of two. If we change the number, if the number is, suppose uh, it's uh, 32, sorry, 33, it's 32. So it should give true. See, it is giving us true. If the number is, suppose, 0, uh, obviously, it's number is 0, then it should be false. But number is 1, then it's always, it, it will always give true. Sorry, number is 1 then it will always give true see true okay if the number is zero then definitely it's false so this is how you can do it so you can go and check out my dsa with java course the link you will get in the description box of this video as well as in the pinned comment so now that's it for this video now i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care